Hello friends, welcome back to my channel Think Different. This is Chatriya Verman. Today in this video, we'll see about crop production and management. So let us go into the video. Before going into the video, subscribe my channel to get our notifications immediately. Okay, now let's see the topics to be covered. Topics to be covered are what, crop, the definition of crop, types of crop, agricultural practices. This agricultural practices also includes these many. The preparation of soil, sowing, adding manure and fertilizers, irrigation, protecting from weeds, harvesting, storage. These are agricultural practices and then animal husbandry. Okay. First, let us see what of plant is cultivated in the larger area of land. Then it is called as crop. Plants of the same kind that are grown and cultivated as a source of food in a large cultivable land is called crop. As I told, the same kind of plants like paddy, maize, which are cultivated or sown in large area of land and we cultivate in the same land. That is called crop. Okay, now let us let me show the image of crop. This is the image of crop. This is maize. And down this is paddy. This is the way they crop or plant it in the large area of land. This is called crop. Okay. Now we know what is crop. We also want to know types of crops. There are three types of crops. First crop. Carif crops. Carif crops. The crops which are grown in the rainy season. The from June to September are called carif crops. Paddy, maize, soya bean. Groundnut and cotton are carif crops. Okay, there are three types of crops. Okay, first one carif crops, second one rabi crops, third is zaid crops. First, we'll see what is carif crops. Carif carif crops. Carif crop is nothing but the crops or the seeds which are sown in rainy season. In the rain time, they sow the seed and its month is June to September. This is an important point. The month of carif crops is June to September. And some of these examples are paddy, maize, soya bean, groundnut, cotton. There are many examples I have given you down. Okay. Now we know what is carif. Now let's see what is rabi. Rabi crops. The crops are grown in the winter season from October to March are called rabi crops. Examples for rabi crops are wheat, gram, pea, mustard and linseed. Okay, rabi crops, carif crops. Carif crops we sow in rainy season. But rabi crops we sow the seeds in winter season. The month, the period or the month of rabi crops is October to March and some examples of rabi crops are wheat, gram, pea, mustard, linseed. There are many examples I have given here some and down some. The third type, zaid crops. Zaid crops or summer crops. The zaid crops is also known as summer crops because it is grown or sown in summer season. The crops grown in the summer season are called zaid crops, moong, muskmelon, watermelon, cucumber, gourd and bitter gourd are examples of zaid crops. Okay, zaid crops, we know carif crops in rainy season, rabi crops in winter season. The next season is summer season. The summer season which the seeds are sown is called zaid crops. And this zaid crops is only sown in summer seasons which is during April and May. Okay. Now we'll see the examples of uh, uh, zaid crops: moong, muskmelon, watermelon, cucumber, gourd, bitter gourd. Uh, are some examples of zaid crops. Down we'll see many. Okay. First we'll see some examples of carif crops. Carif crops. There are many examples, but only six or few examples I have given here. First, rice. Rice. Corn, soya bean, sugar cane, round neck, cotton. These are some examples for carif crops. The second, rabi crops. Rabi crops also, there are many examples. I have given only some. Wheat, oats, chickpea, mustard, 
then you have almond and broccoli these are some examples for rabi crops then we'll see about zaid crops zaid crops as i told as i read in that examples the same bitter gourd pumpkin eggplant watermelon muskmelon bitter gourd gourd there are many examples for zaid crops also the some specifically uh, the known ones i have given here okay now we know what is crop and what is types of crops now how to develop this crop we need to know that so that is called agricultural practices the process involved in growing plants or sowing plants which is grown to develop that or maintain that that is called agricultural practices in agricultural practices there are many steps sorry there are seven steps in seven steps involved in this agricultural practices we'll see one by one first preparation of soil what is preparation of soil preparation of soil is nothing but before sowing the seeds you have to prepare the soil or loosen the soil to get easily the seeds inside and it will, the roots will go deeper into the soil this is the way you prepare the soil soil preparation it involves loosening and tilling of the soil loosening you lose the soil tilling is nothing but um up sir you are taking the down soil to the upper part upper soil to the down part like that you are tilling mixing up the soil and loosening the soil to get the seed going inside the soil which gets uh, root which grows root nicely and goes deeper into the soil okay now we know what is soil preparation or preparation of soil now tools used for preparing soil there are three tools used for preparing soil first one plow plow this is the ancient method where farmer used to plow and bo- uh, ox or bull to uh, loosen the soil i'll show you the image yes this is the way they plow the soil plow the soil mean they take the plow plow is a tool this is the tool plow tool they tie it with the ox or a bull and they make it go and the that plow they leave it uh, to the soil that loosens or tilts the soil to make it loosen okay this is the first step in ancient method farmer used second how this is used in medieval method that is how this how is already seen many where this how also used to till or use this sorry loose this soil okay and we can also use this for removing weeds removing weeds you'll see and uh, below this uh, you will know more about it okay next third one cultivator this is the modern method used by farmers this modern method that means cultivator is nothing but they use tractor and this also saves labor and time they use a drill a uh, backsay which they is fix uh, which is um, uh, touching to the soil when they move the tractor the drill horn loosens and tilts the soil okay this is the modern method of um, loosening or tilling the soil this is called cultivator now first step preparation of for soil is over next sowing 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 is the process of putting seeds in the soil. You know sowing. Sowing is nothing but planting seeds or putting seeds in the soil, which actually forms a crop. Okay. There, there are even two tools used for sowing. Okay. Traditional tool, which means ancient time, and modern tool, which is seed drill. Okay. We'll see one by one. traditional tool traditional tool it will be in funnel shaped here it is given they will tie that to the ox and the bull then when if uh, they will put the seeds in that funnel when the ox or bull move, starts moving the funnel shaped uh, the funnel shaped tool inside one one seed it will fall down into the soil which uh, which is called sowing okay this method in this method it takes lots of time and it uh, it say it takes lots of time and the seeds are not evenly spreaded it will spread here and there okay this is traditional tool that is ancient tool 
this one seed drill seed drill is the modern method of sowing in this they use tractor it saves labor and time they put the same like they will put the seeds into this containers then when the tractor starts moving through this container it comes to the soil and the seeds spread equally in the same line so this uh, this it's very useful it uh, makes line and it is uniformly spread it okay this is a modern method of sowing so the second step is over which is sowing the third step adding manure and fertilizer you have prepared the soil then you sowed the seeds third you have to give manure and fertilizers for that seeds are to the soil you uh, i think you know about manure and fertilizers manure manure and fertilizers both we add to the soil to get nutrient and the plants growth nicely okay manure manure is nothing but the natural process we get the um, we get it and put it to the plants okay it is it contains lots of humus but the fertilizers is a inorganic matter which does not contain any humus okay now we'll see difference between fertilizer and manure in this you can understand the difference between fertilizer and manure fertilizer a fertilizer is an inorganic soil a fertilizer is prepared in factories a fertilizer does not provide any humus to the soil fertilizers are very rich in plant nutrients like nitrogen phosphorus and potassium okay in manure if you see it is a natural substance and it is the decomposition will decompose the natural things and we get manure and manure is prepared in large fields and it contains humus lots of humus to the soil and manure is not uh, relatively rich in plant nutrients fertilizer is man made or inorganic salt manure is a natural substance fertilizer is prepared in factories manure is prepared in large fields fertilizer does not provide humus to the soil but manure provides humus to the soil fertilizers are rich in uh, plant nutrient but manure is not rich in plant nutrient okay these are the some difference between fertilizer and manure now after adding manure and fertilizer this is the third step the fourth step is irrigation irrigation means supply of water the supply of water to crops at regular intervals is called irrigation irrigation means the supply of water we have to pour water right after adding manure and fertilizers if we pour water only the plant starts growth okay so irrigation mean the supply of water to the plants at regular interval okay even the irrigation is divided into two methods traditional method and modern method okay in traditional method there are four types that, uh, that is mowed pulley system chain system rahar uh, rahar system dakli system these are the four traditional methods of irrigation mowed pulley system chain system rahat system dakli system okay modern method if you see it is divided only two two only important others all now they invented okay sprinkler irrigation drip irrigation surface irrigation subsurface irrigation these are some these are four types of modern irrigation okay again i will repeat the irrigations traditional method irrigation is divided into two methods traditional method and modern method in traditional method there are four things that is mowed pulley system chain system rahat system dakli system and modern irrigation is also divided into four types which is surface irrigation drip irrigation sprinkler irrigation and subsurface irrigation okay the sources of irrigation sources of irrigation where do you get water for irrigation that all will see here the sources of water for irrigation are wells to wells ponds lakes rivers dams these are the ways you get water for irrigation okay this is the fourth process of agricultural practices now we'll go to the fifth process which is protecting from weeds weeds as i told weeds are the unwanted plants which grows inside the crop to remove that we'll see here okay weeds 
Weeds are undesirable plants that may grow naturally along with a crop. Weeds are also a plant, but it is undesirable, not useful plant which grows inside the crop. So, for meter, for taking that weeds, there are two methods divided into two methods, which is physical method and chemical method. Physical method, we can uh, take the weeds by our hands or by using hoe. Acetyl hoe is also used for loosening and tilling the soil as well as removing weeds. Physical method you use uh, by taking hands, by using hands and taking the weeds and by using hoe. Second chemical method, chemical method we use herbicides and weedicides. Herbicides or weedicides uh, for spraying. We spray it and um, kill the weeds. Okay. I'll show you the image. This is the way you take by physical method. By hands and hoe. Uh, this is physical method. This is chemical method. You use uh, spraying. Uh, herbicide and uh, weedicide. You spray it and kill the weeds. Okay. This is the fifth step involved in agricultural practices. Which is protecting from weeds. We'll go to the sixth step. Which is harvesting. Harvesting. Harvesting means if the crop is matured, you have to cut it, right? Then we get grains from that. Harvesting is the process of cutting the crop after it is mature. As I told, after the plant grits or the crop gets mature, we harvest it and get the grains. Okay. Now we'll see methods of harvesting. Harvesting is also done by two methods. First is the manual method where a sickle is used. Manual method are humans. Humans use this method. Sickle. Sickle is a tool which is used to cut the crop. Okay. Second method we'll see. Second method is the mechanical method where a huge machine called harvester is used. Second method is the mechanical method, a machine method where it is the huge machine comes and it is called harvester and it is used to cut the harvest uh, the matured crops okay first step the manual method is this this is the tool sickle this we use with our hands and cut the crop okay second one this is the harvester this machine is used to harvest or cultivate the crop okay okay this is also there is one more tool combined that is also called harvester okay this is the sixth step involved in the agricultural practices. Now we'll see what is storage. Storage is the seventh step, the last step involved in the agricultural practices. Grains obtained by threshing are dried to the open. The dried grains are stored in gunny bags and placed in properly ventilated cemented halls known as good downs. Farmers keep dried grains in jute bags or metallic bins or mud bins. Large scale storage of grains is done by silos. Okay, grains. The, uh, the way threshing. Threshing. Here is the word threshing. Threshing means from the plant, if you beat and take the grain out, that process is called threshing. That they will, the farmers, they will dry it up fully and catch it. Um, and they fill it in the jute bags, metallic bins, mud bins, silos. These all the things they store the grains and keep it in the safe place or ventilating place called gardens. Okay, I'll show you the image of silos. This is silos, a large tank. They put all the grain inside this and store it in the gardens. Okay, this is metallic bin. In this also they store. Okay, up of jute. It is made up of jute. This uh, bag is made up of jute. So, it is called jute bag or gunny bag. They store it in this also. Okay, that's all. We saw seven practices of seven agricultural practices. These seven steps are important for a crop production or plant growth. If these in this seven products, seven practices any one practices is missing also then the agricultural the plant growth is difficult okay so these seven practices also also important the last topic we came animal husbandry animal husbandry as we saw crop production 
uh, crop in a large area they will cultivate cultivate the same kind of land like that animal husbandry also in a big form like cow form sheep form you see in a big form the animals are kept together and they cultivate uh, sorry and they take things they give milk egg they take that and sell it that is called animal husbandry animal husbandry is the branch of agriculture where animals are reared breed and raised to me for meat fiber eggs milk and other food products as i told the animals is also kept in large forms and reared some nutrients like meat fiber egg milk and other food products okay so this is animal for husbandry in this they have given pictures of some animal husbandry see duck cow then sheep hen okay this is the last topic of our the crop production and management that's all we saw everything about crop production and management the seven agricultural practices that is only very important okay uh, thank you if you like this video share like comment and don't forget to subscribe my channel thank you take care bye bye